In this lesson, we're going to learn how to work with nodes. Nodes play a big part in everything in Houdini. It's important to understand how they function. So we're going to start at the object level. Where we've got two objects, a box object uh, and a sphere, and they are currently connected in a parent-child relationship. If we break that, we can rotate the box and the sphere does not relate to that at all. But if we parent it, uh, then they work together. Now there are flags on the node. We can display them or hide them using those flags. So here we are hiding and we can do both of them with this. We can also, at the object level, there's also a select flag and if we turn that off, we can't select the sphere. So even if we, even if we try to select the sphere, we're actually going to select through to the, the box. Now we press the Y key to slice those to disconnect them. But if we go very far away and we want to connect them, we can actually use the J key and we can actually strike through that and connect them even though we can't access the dots. Uh, and we can use the J key here too, but, but when you're zoomed out you can clearly see the benefit. We're now diving down into the geometry level of the box, which is made up of a box and a sphere that have been Boolean together. Now for the other one, we can it's currently set to be ghosted. We can display it if we want. Um, the only thing is if we display it and we, let's say, want to select some points, it won't be included because that, that blue sphere is from another object. We can also hide other objects so we can clearly focus on the what we have at hand. So that's a menu worth keeping an eye on. If we go into here, we can set the display flag on this first node at the top of the chain, and we see that on its own. If we go on to the Boolean, we see the relationship between those two, and if we set the display flag down here on the material node, we get more information about the chain. Now, we can select and template the box, that's the, the flag in the bottom, and that allows me to see a sort of a, a wireframe version of it in relation to the rest of it. Similarly, we can go through and we can take, for instance, the poly bevel and say, let's bypass that. So now we're getting everything in the chain except for the beveling because that's been bypassed. So that, that, that flag is important as well. And we can also, if we look at these different nodes, what we can do is select the box node and get a handle and even though we're looking at the material node, the result of the material node, we get a sort of a wireframe and we get the handle that allows us to work with the node uh, that we select independent of the other one. In this case, we actually even see the sphere that makes the, the uh, Boolean and we can see that and make decisions about it. So that's part of the procedural construction of what goes on in, in, in Houdini and you have the ability to work with that and manipulate that. We can also set a flag here on this null node that's sort of the end of the chain. We can also go to a node and sort of display up here. And we see right there with the Boolean. So again, moving around this network. Now the thing is, notice that when we did that and we go back to the object level, that's what we see. We see that Boolean. We don't see the end result. So. One way to alleviate that is to put an output node down. And if we put an output do node down, even if the display flag is set up at the Boolean and we go up this level, we'll get the end result of that chain. So that's an important um, thing to remember and the output node is very good at that because it's very easy to put your, your display flag on the wrong place and then you won't get the result that you want. Over here, this flag uh, gives you information, an information panel that tells you about uh, points, vertices, groups, attributes, anything you need for that object, uh, and you can bring that up. Now we can set the display flag on, let's go in, let's expand this up, and let's start to just play around with these nodes and, and see what we can do with them. So at this point, we're not really, you know, we're not, worrying about the 3D view. We're just going to tinker with some nodes and see what we can do. So like we did before, we can use Y to disconnect those. We can press J to connect them. But notice because Bevel had two inputs, we actually ended up going into the wrong one. Um, we actually wanted to go into the first one. So if we'd used the swipe down with the J a little bit closer to the, the left side, it would have been better. 
Now, we can right click on there and tab and put down a, an object, like a null object here, insert that in between. We can wiggle that to get that out of there. And if we want to, we can t just place that and drop that onto a, a line there if we want to put it into the chain there. Now obviously the node has to make sense, um, but an all node doesn't do anything, so that's fine. We can alt click to, uh, to make a copy of that if we need to branch off and try something new. We can also take a node like this and alt control shift. And when we drag with that, uh, what happens is we get a reference copy. So not only is it a copy of the node, but every parameter is pointing to the original uh, to get its values. So you can have one original node that, that you set values on and all its reference copies would follow suit. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to press the Alt key and put down a what's called a, a dot. And it's sort of an organizational tool that sort of helps you clean up your network and make your network look the way that you want it to. Uh, you can actually connect to them. They're, they're part of a scene. So, you know, if I want to, I can take, for instance, this uh, null object and say, you know, wire that into there. And that works. Uh, but we'll put the sphere in instead. Uh, so you can move around these uh, these dots and use them to organize and, and make your scene or your network view look better. We can also start organizing if we take this and press the A key, we can drag down to line them up and space them nicely. That's uh, we can also let's say things were not lined up there. The other option is to go to the layout menu and they have an option here for align nodes vertically. And then there's another option for distribute nodes vertically. So number of tools available if you need to organize and clean up your networks, make them easy to read for other people. Press P to turn off the uh, parameter pane there. And Z will bring up our node shape palette. And we can start to go through and select different nodes and say we want uh, something a little more dynamic there. And we want this one to be sort of an arrow pointing down just to, to indicate its direction. So you've got a whole bunch of shapes you can use to make your nodes the way you want. If you press C, you can also color them. So you can go through and say, well, these, these ones you know, have a certain level of importance. These ones we're not so sure about. And maybe these ones here we're going to make blue and say, OK, they're good to go. Don't, don't touch those. Anyway, whatever language you want to use, uh, you can use color to help communicate to both yourself and maybe to your colleagues. Now, if you bring up the info window, one of the things you can do is type in a comment. So this is a this is a null node. Um, the information isn't important for, at this point, but uh, it's used as a placeholder. And we close. Now, right now, you see a little bubble there. Um, if we want to see the actual text, we can click this option, show comment on network. And now you've got a note right there. So this is great for annotating your networks, helping other people read them and understand them. You also have sticky notes that you can put in to just give a general note about things. So maybe you're not sure about uh, these nodes. Maybe you want somebody to review them. We already highlighted them in yellow. Maybe there's a better way of doing this. So that could be a communication tool between two people working on the same file. Um, we can also select this and put them into what's called a, a network box. Um, and we can go in and give that a name. And if we want to, we can even collapse that because maybe we don't we don't want to touch those nodes right now, and we just we just want to have them available as a single entity. Now there's another way to do something similar, which is that you can select a few no couple nodes, just select those two, and you put them into a subnetwork. So in this case, it's not just a, a dressing; uh, it actually has an input and an output, uh, and you can do things inside this network that are separate from the other network. These are often used to create digital assets. Most digital assets get collapsed into subnetworks. Um, so that's another tool at your disposal. So if you have things like, say, really crazy laid out, one of the things you can do is press L to sort of just clean that up a little bit. Uh, it doesn't always put things where you really want them. So you know it might be better to use the other align tools and so on to get um, the result that you want. And the other thing you have is a palette over here. 
So if, if you don't want to use the tools up above, the tool shelves or other ways of getting tools, uh, you can just find a node and just say, you know what, I want that node and I want it in my scene, so just drag it over. Uh, currently it put it inside the chain there. We could wiggle that out and, and attach it somewhere else if we want.